Johnson Pegg was intended to train U.S. Air Force and U.S. Navy, U.S. Marine pilots how to fly and fight against a real Soviet aircraft. It all kind of got started back during the Vietnam War and um, the U.S. came into possession of, uh, of some real Russian MiGs. We uh, exploited them, found out how they worked and what all the engineering details were. And then the uh, test pilots went and flew them, find out how fast they'd go, how high they'd go, how tight they'd turn. I was in General Vandenberg's office one day trying to get him to sign one of these test plans. And uh, he says, you know, he says, I hate this. He says, you guys have to go through the, the pain of writing a test plan. He says, we ought to just be training with these airplanes. Uh, about all I could say in response to him was, sir, uh, maybe we can put the MiGs on our own airfield and we can train with them without all of this test plan business. And so that's kind of the way it all got started. And when I briefed General Vandenberg on this, I reminded him, now, this is going to be our program, it ought to be on your call sign. Do you have a call sign, sir? He says, you ought to know what my call sign is, Major. He said, it's constant. And uh, I thought of, um, thought of my wife, Peggy, and I thought, hmm, constant, peg, constant peg. That has a nice ring to it. So that's how we named the program. The whole idea of building an airfield was an overwhelming challenge. I got to thinking about it, and so I, I pulled out a ballpoint pen and a napkin off the airliner, and I sketched out a little drawing of extending the runway and putting a pad there for three hangars and, and stuff like that. And um, I'd convinced myself that Tonopah was the right place for this project. It was real close to Nellis, Red Flag, the Fighter Weapons School, and so there were just a lot of really good reasons. As soon as they got hangars built, we started putting airplanes together. We had pieces, you know, we had airframes and wings and all that stuff, but they weren't flyable. Those guys would get it back where it could fly and uh, fly safely. And they took airplanes that had been pulled out of uh, swamps and deserts and God knows where they got them. We didn't even pre-flight them. We had that much trust in our maintenance team and they didn't let us down. They were good. They were really good. It wasn't that difficult to figure it out. I mean, it was a lot of reverse engineering, you know, but airplane's pretty much an airplane. It was so totally classified that um, it was strictly on a must-know basis, not a need-to-know, but a must-know. Supposedly, we were trying to be non-military, the maintenance guys were, at Tonopah, so that if they went downtown, people wouldn't suddenly look at them and say, I wonder what that kind of Air Force operation is going on there. Because you'd look at these guys and they all had long hair and beards and certainly didn't look like uh, an Air Force enlisted guy. It's one thing to fight another airplane, but one that you've never seen and don't know its capabilities is a whole different story. We built on to the concept of the building block approach. You don't advance until you are absolutely proficient at this level. Then you can go to the next level and the next level. We would start them off with some very basic performance characteristics of the two aircraft. Acceleration, turn. We proceeded from there to one versus one engagements and then uh, two versus one engagement. You only had to watch the eyes of a fighter pilot joining up on you. He's coming in in his airplane, and the closer he gets, pretty soon you can see his helmet, and you can see his head, and pretty soon you can see his face, and you can see his eyeballs peering at you over his oxygen mask, you know, and they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger as he's getting in closer and closer. He's never seen a Russian airplane in flight, for real. What an experience that is. The comments, I guess, that you, we got from the pilots was uh, the main indication that this is quite a program. During that 10-year period, the men flew over 15,000 MiG sorties, and uh, they trained almost 6,000 American airmen on how to air fight against the MiG-17, the MiG-21, and the uh, MiG-23.